Hey, what's up, I'm Norris. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing a sew along for my latest patterns with Nomi Patterns, which is ME2087. And today we'll be doing view B, which is the baggy pant without the cargoes. Now, if you're new to sewing, I just need to brush up on your skills a bit. Go to sewedacademy.com, take advantage of our free trial, then come back and then sew along with me. Now let's get started. Okay, once again, like I said, we're using my latest pattern with Nomi Patterns and it's ME2087. And we're doing view B, same fit and everything. I'm just not doing the cargo pockets or putting the back pockets on the front too. Um, it has four of these patch pockets, two in the front, two in the back. I will be doing the two in the back so you'll know how to do the ones in the front. And then I'll just do a quick demonstration if you want to do view A for the cargo pockets. And then I'll let you know when in the construction process to put them on. Now, if you look at the back, remember all suggested fabrics is across the top. You look for your sizes chest, waist, and hips. And once you find um, a size that's close to what you need it to be, you wanna go down to finished garment measurements. Now the finished garment measurements, especially with the hips, it tell you exactly what the finished garment will measure around the hips. Now remember, this is a baggy jean, a streetwear vibe. Now that's what you will be getting at the end of the construction process. So there won't be any skinny jeans or anything tailored. These are supposed to fit baggy, all right? Now let's go through all the pattern pieces we'll need for this particular pattern. All right, you're gonna need pattern piece number one, which is the front. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Now this is for A and B. Pattern piece number eight, this is the back. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. And once again, this is for view A and view B. Next we have pattern piece number 15. This is the left waistband. And you wanna cut one of fabric and then one of interfacing. And then number 14, this is the right waistband. You wanna cut one of fabric and then one of interfacing. And these both are for view A and B. Okay, next we have pattern piece number three. This is the yoke front for view A and for view B. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. And remember, there are two placements right here for your corn pocket. And this right here is your left side pocket, which is a, also called a corn pocket. It's pattern piece number four. Now, you only need to cut one of these and it goes only on the left side, okay? And then next we have pattern piece number nine. This is your yoke back for view A and for view B. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. Next we have pattern piece number seven. This is your upper pocket. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric if you're doing view B like I'm doing. But if you're doing view A, you wanna cut four of these out of your fabric. Next we have pattern piece number six. This is your right fly. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric and then one of interfacing. And this is for your view A and also view B. Pattern piece number five is for view A and for view B. This is the left fly facing. You wanna cut one of these out of fabric and then one out of interfacing. Now pattern piece number 13, this is your carrier for view A and for view B, basically the belt loops. You wanna cut two of these out of your fabric because we're gonna cut five out of one and then five out of the other one. We have a total of 10 belt loops for this particular design. Okay, last but not least, this is pattern piece number two. This is the side front and also the pocket. Um, now, you wanna cut this for view A and for view B. You wanna cut two of these out of your lining. Now, the lining I would suggest is would be like a light cotton. I would stay away from anything silky or anything sheer. Okay, so once you cut all of your pattern pieces out of your fabric, interfacing, and also your lining, we could begin sewing. Okay, first, I'm just gonna start with the patch pockets. Pretty easy to get out of the way. Now, I went ahead and did a surge across the top just to secure it so it won't fray. And then at the fold line, right sides facing, you wanna just fold that back, grab your pins, Okay, so just go to the machine real quick and we're just going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance here and then here. Now if you want a guide, you can continue that stitch all the way down the side, the bottom, and then up the other side. But for me, I don't need a guide. I can just look and see where to fold for um, the 5 eighths of an inch down here. So go ahead and stitch that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I went ahead and stitched on both sides. So now I'm just going to trim just a little bit off the side. And I like to keep just a little bit of the bottom so it can tuck under. That's why you see that little point. Okay, you wanna grab your point turner. We're gonna turn this right side out. Okay, so once you do that, this automatically folds in 5 eighths of an inch on both the sides, okay? So you wanna to go to your pressing table, give it a good press, and then across the bottom, do the same exact thing. Press up 5 eighths of an inch, 
And then once you give that a good press, you want to turn it to the right side and do a top stitching all the way across, catching this fold underneath. Okay, so go ahead and do your pressing, top stitching, come back, and let's continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine, did the top stitching across that catches that fold underneath, and as you can see, everything is pressed. So we're gonna use this for the back pockets, or if you cut four of them, you'll be using it for the back and also the upper front pockets. But for now, we're just gonna put it to the side. Now this right here is the corn pocket. You want to do the corn pocket the same exact way. And like I said, it only goes on the left side. So this is my front yoke. As you can see, I have the markings. So I'm gonna line that up exactly where it needs to go. And then I'm going to pin. Okay, so let's just head to the machine. We're gonna stitch, edge stitch all the way across and then up to the other side, leaving the top free for the pocket. And then we're going to do a second row of top stitching. And then you want to do a second row the same exact way, a quarter inch away from the first one. We're back from the machine. As you can see, the corn pocket is on the left side. And also on this side here, which is going to be towards the center of the pants. This right here is going to be outside seam here. You want to go ahead and I'm going to flip it. You want to press up three eighths of an inch. Okay. So once you press up that three eighths of an inch, head back to the machine and top stitch this a quarter inch away from the fold so that can stay in place, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue with our pocket. Okay, we're back from the machine. I went ahead and did that top stitching, but then also I did a surge on the bottom. So now what we're gonna do is take your, your lining, okay? And then you wanna place this right here in the corner. You'll see the same shape, not this side here, okay? And then I'm just going to go ahead and pin around the sides. Okay, so I'm going to head to the machine. We're going to edge stitch here and then across the bottom. And then we're going to base across the sides and then across the top. Now switch over to your basing stitch. Okay, now we have the front yoke and also the pocket bag all together, ready to put onto our front piece. Now what we're gonna do is, right sides facing, you wanna turn this upside down and align it right where you see that same shape. And we're gonna pin, okay? Now, let's head to the machine. We're going to stitch this down using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. We'll go around this right here as a curve, and we're not going to pivot. It's a 90 degree angle here, but we're just going to curve it out up under the machine and continue to the end. So let's go do that. Okay, so once we get here, we're just going to round it out. We just want to pivot, making sure that we keep that corner right here right aligned with five eighths of an inch. Okay, now we can straighten it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and just clip almost to that, maybe an eighth of an inch away from the stitching, and then we're just going to kind of trim this down to about a quarter inch, making it very narrow once we get closer to that curve. Okay, so now we're gonna turn this to the inside and shaping it up. So now go ahead, now if it's not giving you a really good curve, you wanna go back and trim just a little bit more but then once you do that, you want to give this a really, really good press, okay? Make sure you push it out. Once you give it a good press, we're going to do two rows of top stitching along the front of the pocket. Okay, I'm back from the pressing table. Now I have everything laying flat, and this is the front of the pocket. The rest of the pocket bag is over here to the side. Now let's do two rows of stitching. The first one is going to be an edge stitch.
Okay, so you wanna do a second row of top stitching a quarter inch away from the first one. Okay, we're back from the machine. As you can see, we did our two rows of stitching here. So now we're just, what we're gonna do is just flip this pocket to the other side and we're just going to basically line it up. Now you see it coming together. But first, we have to close out this pocket bag. So I'm gonna lift the pants up real quick. There should be two double notches here for it to line up, and then also here. Okay, so head over to your machine. You wanna stitch around this curve here, stopping at the fold using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then also you can finish that off with a serge, okay? Also, if you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch or use peak and shears. Okay, as you can see, we closed that pocket out on the bottom here and I finished it up with a serge. So now I'm just going to pin the side. That should be notches to align that up. And then also for the top, you wanna to make sure you have everything laying flat. Okay, so just head back to the machine one more time and you just want to baste up here and then baste just right here to keep that together. All right, now once you do that, you want to do your other pocket bag the same exact way on the right side, which is, which would be on the left here with minus the, the corn pocket here. Okay, so go ahead and do that and we'll prepare for our zipper. Once you have both of your fronts um, done, um, I went ahead and did a serge on the outside seam and then also the inside seam on both sides. And then as you can see here where the crotch is on my left side here, which is the right side, I did all of it. But then on the left side, which is on the right here, I went just past that notch. And there's no reason for me to go all the way up because it has a different type of fold over flap that we will be stitching on to this side. Okay, so let's go ahead and right sides facing just like this. We're going to pin at that notch first. And then also we're gonna pin at that dot in the center. And just to show you on the pattern piece, we're pinning at that large dot here, okay? Not that small one because that's only goes on the right side anyway, okay? So let's head to the machine. We're gonna stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we're gonna start at that notch and then go up to that dot. And backstitch at the beginning and also at the end a few times just to secure it pretty good. And then while we're at the machine, you wanna go ahead and take your fly facing, the one we just cut out of fabric and then also interfacing. And I went ahead and did a serge on it, but then I cut off three eighths of an inch because it's seam allowance. You have the option to fold five eighths of an inch or you can just trim it off and make it clean, okay? If you choose to fold the five eighths of an inch, you might have to do some gathering around that curve there and then do your top stitching to make it clean. But this is a easier way to do it. And now this right here is the fly front for the right side. So the right side is facing. You want to go ahead and match them up and then pin around the curved side. Now with this one, we're gonna do 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now let's take all this to the machine so we can sew it up. So starting at that notch, back stitch. Just like that. And then now we're going to do 3 eighths of an inch for our right fly. Okay, you wanna trim off just a little bit from the curve and then turn it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, we're back from the machine. We have our fly for the right side, which is on the left right here. And then also I went ahead and pressed under three eighths of an inch on this side, okay? So just go to your pressing table, turn under three eighths of an inch and press that. And there should be a dot right there at that three eighths of an inch so you don't have to press past that. Now once you do that, we can go ahead and grab our zipper. Now we wanna place the zipper three quarters of an inch away from the top. So I wanna do that, put a little marking 
Now that's where the top of the zipper teeth right here should stop, not up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that underneath, line that up just like that. And I'm gonna give myself just under an eighth of an inch from the zipper teeth to that fold. And then I'm going to pin. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna to head to the machine and we're just going to base this down an eighth of an inch away from that fold. Okay, I switched out my regular presser foot for my zipper foot. And then also I aligned my needle a little bit closer to the right side, just so I can have it exactly where I want it. So let's go ahead and base this down. Okay, stopping at that marking. Okay, so we're back from basting this down. So now we're gonna take our fly and put it right behind the zipper. Also, I should just mention, I went ahead and did a surge on this side here. I didn't trim anything off, I just made it clean, okay? So now we're just gonna line this up and making sure that the edge is right at the edge of that zipper tape, you see? Just like that. I'm gonna make sure it's not in front of it or behind it. Just line right up both edges of the zipper tape and then also that fly. And then once we align them up, I'm gonna go ahead and pin. You wanna do the same exact thing. You want to do a regular stitch now, right where you put that basting stitch and secure your fly to the right side, which is on the left right here. And then after that, you can just pull that basing stitch out. All right, so head to the machine, go ahead and stitch this down, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and moving right along. As you can see, we have this in place, only just that side there. And then now you wanna take your fly for the left side and then we're just going to match up that double notch and pin across the center front. And then also there should be a a dot too here at the bottom that you want to stop at. All right, so let's head to the machine. We're gonna stitch across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, you wanna switch back over to your regular presser foot. And I'm gonna put my needle right where that marking is. Okay, so we're gonna do some under stitching. So keep your seam allowance facing the right and we're gonna fold your facing to that side too. And we're just going to stitch just past that seam, but on the right side. Okay, now head to your pressing table, turn it to the inside and give it a good press. Okay, so we're back from the pressing table. As you can see that fly is underneath and pressed really well. So this is how I line mine up. So you just want to make sure that you're not looking at your stitching at all. You wanna make sure you have it perfectly down the middle and that lines up very good, okay? So what we're gonna do next is I like to take a pin and just pin mine in place right there in the center. I'll just take a couple pins. Okay, so now I fold back here. And then now I can see my zipper on the other side. Okay, just like that. And then we fold this part back, the fly on the other side, and I just pin it out the way. And then now, we're ready for the machine. We can go ahead and base this down here, okay? Base down the other side of your zipper tape. Okay, so I've already done this, but I wasn't re recording, as you can see my stitching already, but I'm just going to follow it. I cheated my needle over a little bit because I'm not using my zipper foot. If you wanna use your zipper foot, you probably wouldn't have to move it at all, but I'm just gonna do a basic stitch. I'm 
And then once you get to the end, you can just push that zipper out the way. Okay, so now let's head back to the table. Okay, so now, since we have that basing on that side, I'm going to unpin this from the other side. And then on the front, I'm going to open up that too. Okay, now we have one more thing to do to finish it up. I'm going to open up the zipper here and I'm going to pin the fly to catch that fold underneath here because it's still hanging free. Now, if you need to mark across this here, you can because there is a marking for it to get that nice top stitching on this side. But I can feel where the end of it is, the edge is underneath. So I'm just gonna follow that just by feeling it. Yeah. Zip this back up. And then once again, I'm just going to turn this to this side so I can get it out of the way again. And then maybe one more time here at the bottom. Okay, so now we're gonna to head to the machine. We're gonna do two rows of stitching to stitch down our fly front underneath. Okay, so once we have one row of top stitching, you wanna do a second one on the inside a quarter inch away from the first one. Okay, we're back from the machine. Once you unzip it, you should have Everything lined up and the zipper is complete. Okay, so for right now, we're gonna take this and put it to the side for just a second and grab our back piece and our patch pockets. Okay, so moving right along, this is our back piece and this is one of our patch pockets. So I'm gonna align it right here where you see our markings and I'm going to pin. Okay, so you're gonna head to the machine, you're gonna edge stitch all the way around, except for the top. And then you wanna to top stitch one more, three eighths of an inch on the inside of that one, down the side, across the bottom, and then up the other side, okay? So go ahead and do your top stitching or your patch pocket, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we have the patch pocket put onto the back, now we're gonna grab our back yoke. Now, there should be a notch here. Now you want the wider side to be on in the center here, in the center back and the shorter side here on the outside. So on the right side, you wanna flip it and we're gonna pin at that notch first and you'll have a little bit hanging out on that side here. Okay, now let's head to the machine. We're gonna start here and stitch all the way across using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so after we attached it, I pressed that seam down and I finished it with a surge and then I did two rolls of top stitching as we've been doing edge stitch first and then a quarter inch away from that and then I pressed it and then once you have both of them done the same exact way we can go ahead and start putting this together now let's grab the other one other back and we're right sides facing we want to make sure we are lining those seams up and pin. So go ahead and stitch using five eighths of an inch seam allowance down the center back. And you wanna go ahead and press that seam open. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see, we have the seam pressed open. And then now I'm just gonna grab the front. And then also I went ahead and finished off from that notch all the way down to the end when it came to the front, cause we left a bit of that open. So now I'm just gonna give you the option if you're doing the cargo version, you want to do your outside seams first, which allows you to open it up like this and to put your patch pocket on. And you'll need pattern piece number 11. You're gonna cut two out of your fabric. Pattern piece number 10, you wanna cut two of these out of your fabric. And then pattern piece number 12, you're gonna cut four out of fabric and two out of interfacing. When it comes to your flaps, you have one interface, right sides facing, and then you stitch 
around the bottom and the sides and turn it right side out after you trim and you have your flap. Now with, if you never use a gusset before, this right here just is going to be the border all the way around. So you're going to stitch all the way across the bottom and then all the way to the other side. But before you do all that, you basically want to bring your dots together to create your pleats. So you fold your right sides facing, stitch your stitch from your dot all the way up, and then your dot here all the way down, and that'll create a nice pleat. And then once you have your gusset all the way around like this, you'll just press 5 eighths of an inch, and then edge stitch that down to your placement onto your pants. Since I'm not doing the cargo version, I don't have to do my outside seam first, but I will just pin. I'm gonna pin the outside seam and then also the inside seam all at the same time. So when we head to the machine, we just have to do the outside seam stitch, five eighths of an inch, and then also the inside. So grab your pins and let's go ahead and match up our notches first and then continue all the way down. Before I mention, I'm not doing it, but if you want the traditional top stitching across your center back seam, you can just push all of your seam allowance to the left. And then you can do your two rows of top stitching like we've been doing. You can add stitch on one side or then a quarter inch away from the other side, you can do your second row of top stitching. So for the front, you can push your seam allowance to the left side, which is to the right here and then do your two rows of top stitching all the way up until you get to where your fly starts, okay? But if you're not, I'm not going to do that for this so I can open up my seams instead of pushing them to the side. But once again, if you want the traditional top stitching on your back and then in the front of your pant, you can push those to the side and top stitch. Okay, so I have one pant leg pinned. You can go ahead and stitch all the way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then also for the center. You want to start in the center and then work your way down using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then you want to pin and sew the other pant leg the same exact way. So do that, come back, and then we'll prep for our belt loops. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have our outside and also our inside seam done and our pants are almost done. So. Next, you want to go ahead and grab your carrier, basically your belt loops. And as you can see, I've already folded mines. So you want to take a quarter inch on both of the long sides and fold them in to those raw edges meet just like this. And then once you do that, we're going to fold it one more time in half. And then we're just going to add stitch on both sides. So give that a good press and we're going to head to the machine and stitch both sides down. Okay, so you want to turn to the other side and edge stitch the other side the same exact way. Okay, now that we have it edge stitched on both of the long ends. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut the belt loops. We have two of these pattern pieces, so you want to do the other one the same exact way. And we should have five for each with a total of ten. So each should be, each belt loop should be three and a half inches. So after you get three and a half inches, you want to just cut them up. Okay, so now I have a total of 10. So let's go ahead and start placing them onto our jeans. Okay, so there should be markings. Two, four, six, eight, and then 10, two in the back. So let's go ahead and put them onto our pants. I'm just going to pin a few in place, but I'm just going to be marking them at the machine. Okay, so just like that. And then we'll have two here as well. So let's head to the machine. I'm going to demonstrate doing a couple and then do the rest and we'll continue. Okay, so we're just going to tack these down. OK, 
Okay, so you wanna tack down the other eight at your other placements the same exact way. Okay, so we're back from the machine. All of our belt loops are tacked down. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then now we're going to take our waistbands. Now, the right waistband is a little bit longer than the left side. That's how you know. There are notches in the center back. You want to line that up and you want to stitch that across using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I went ahead and joined them in the center back. And then at the bottom, I went ahead and turned up the seam allowance. So usually, because we're gonna be doing stitch in the ditch, I don't do the exact seam allowance. I just do an eighth of an inch below. So I do a half inch. So if you wanna do that, it'll make it easier to do stitch in the ditch because it'll be a little bit longer than the regular seam allowance so it can catch. So I did a half inch. So let's go ahead and pin this to the pants, matching up that center back with the center back seam. And then you wanna continue pinning around to the front of both sides. There should be a dot or marking indicating where the side seam is. And both sides should extend 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so now just head to the machine. You wanna start on one end and go all the way across to the other side using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we have the waistband put on. I went ahead and pressed that seam up. So now what we're gonna do, we're going to fold it onto itself at the ends, making sure that the bottom extends at least an eighth of an inch so we can catch it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it this way so we can see it at the machine. And then the same thing on this side. Okay, so let's head to the machine and let's stitch both ends. Okay, so like I said, you want the bottom to extend just a little bit so we can catch it. And then now we're just going to stitch. Okay. You want to do the other side the same exact way. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this off. Then we're going to turn it right side out. Poke that corner out. And then now when you give it a good press, you'll see your waistband taking shape. Okay, so go, give us a good press. You wanna make sure you fold your waistband, making sure that the folded edge here extends past, just past that stitching line. So give that a good press and we'll start pinning so we can stitch in the ditch. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed everything and I pinned right in the center, catching the fold underneath and I did that all the way around as you can see. And then now only thing I have to do is head to the machine and basically stitch right there in the center of that seam, which is called stitch in the ditch. Now, if you look at the instructions, they'll tell you you can um, add stitch on the other side onto the waistband, just past the seam, but it's up to you. I like to do mine so you can't see them. And then if you wanna go back and do some top stitching, um, you can do that, okay? So let's go ahead and stitch in the ditch and we'll continue. Okay, so you want to continue stitching the ditch until you get to the other end. Okay, so once we stitch in the ditch, as you can see, we caught that fold underneath. And then now with the belt loops, you just want to fold under a quarter inch, bring it all the way up to the top, making sure that the belt loop is also straight. And then you just want to edge stitch the top. Okay. So you wanna do the rest of your belt loops the same exact way. Okay, so we're back from the machine. We have all of our belt loops in place. Um, the last few things you have to do is just add your rivets. I like to put a rivet where my pocket corn corner is on the corner of both pockets here, here and here. And then also on the back at the top on both of my patch pockets. And if you did the view in the front where the patch pockets are up here you can do two rivets there and then you want to add your 
buttonhole and then also your denim button all right and then last but not least you can go ahead and do the hem so for me personally i'm gonna do a double fold half inch hem and i'm gonna edge stitch the fold and also a quarter inch away from there okay so once you do all of that you're all done okay you're all done congratulations i hope you enjoyed this course be sure to tag me on all your posts on socials at norris down to ford and i will see you in the next so alone